Bok Choy and Bush. Bok Choy. Uh, Mr. Barnett and Miss Sell. The topic for this debate is that NAPLAN should be abolished. The affirmative team seated to my right is from Emmaus Christian College, and the negative team seated to my left is from Pembroke School. The speaking time for this debate is three minutes, with a double bell at the end of your speaking time. A warning bell will ring once at two minutes. A continuous bell will ring 30 seconds after the final bell. Please switch off your mobile phones and other electronic devices. I declare this debate open and I call upon the first affirmative speaker, Zoe Fusco. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for our debate is that NAPLAN should be abolished. We define the topic as NAPLAN being the National Assessment Program, Literacy and Numeracy, an assessment that aims to measure student development in literacy and numeracy across grades 3, 5, 7 and 9. And we define the word abolished as meaning completely cease from its implementation across all year levels in all Australian schools. We, the affirmative team, believe that this statement is undoubtedly true. Today as first speaker, I will be talking to you about how NAPLAN encourages teachers to teach the test and how NAPLAN causes significant anxiety and self-esteem issues in students. Our second speaker will be talking about how NAPLAN fails to do what it was meant to and how there are better alternatives other than NAPLAN. Our third speaker will rebut and sum up our team case. I'm going to discuss two points. My first point is that implementation of NAPLAN has caused teachers to focus on teaching to this test limiting other areas of learning. The Australian Council for Educational Research indicates that NAPLAN has led to a narrowing of the curriculum in many schools, with teachers reporting they focus more on literacy and numeracy at the expense of other subjects. Macquarie Health also reports that focusing on literacy and numeracy neglects other essential aspects of education, such as critical thinking, creativity, and social emotional skills. Therefore, this teaching to the test approach can undermine the development of these essential skills that are not measured by NAPLAN but are crucial for well-rounded learning and growth. Now to my second point. NAPLAN should absolutely be abolished in schools because it contributes to heightened anxiety and poor self-esteem in children, contributing in both before and after testing. A study conducted by the University of Western Australia found that NAPLAN is a significant source of stress for many st students, with some reporting physical symptoms of anxiety, such as headaches, nausea, sleepless and sleeplessness around the time of testing. This same study highlighted the emotional impact NAPLAN can have on students. According to the Australian Education Research Organisation, student, students are more likely to, to be five times more likely to not participate in the next time of testing. How accurate can this data be then? Swain and colleagues also researched students' perspectives which indicated they were frightened, nervous, anxious and even confused about their expectations. So, Mr Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, we the affirmative team strongly believe that NAPLAN should be completely abolished. Time's up NAPLAN, it's time to go. Thank you. Second affirmative speak or oh, I've called for the first negative speaker, Ciara Kankan. Good evening, Chairperson, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate is that NAPLAN should be abolished. We, the negative team, know that this statement is false. We agree with the definition given by the negative affirmative team. However, we the negative team know that this statement is false. Today as first speaker, I will be talking to you about how NAPLAN teaches children resilience in exam situations, as well as helping students recognise whether they are meeting the benchmark for their age group. Our second speaker will discuss how NAPLAN is crucial to student learning, identifying school improvements and providing valuable data. Our, th our third speaker will rebut in some of our team case. The first affirmative speaker has tried to tell you that NAPLAN causes stress and anxiety. This is wrong because this is wrong because 
While it may cause stress and anxiety, it is a way to, of preparation to cope with stress for future ex assignments and exams. She also spoke about how it, how it leads teachers to teach the test. NAPLAN is based on the Australian curriculum, meaning that teachers are simply teaching what they need to teach, which happens to be the layout on NAPLAN. Today, I will be discussing two points. My first point, NAPLAN teaches children resilience in exam situations. In 2022, 40% of students in primary and high school experience school-related anxiety, according to the National Child Health Poll. However, this can be reduced through exposure therapy, a proven method for treating anxiety disorders, as noted by the Australian Institute of Health. Regular NAPLAN tests help students gradually adapt to the pressures of formal exams, making them more familiar with the testing process. This gradual exposure builds their confidence and equips them with the skills needed for high stake assessments in year 11, 12 and beyond. Thus, NAPLAN fosters resilience that supports students throughout their academic journey. Now to my second point. NAPLAN helps students recognise whether they are meeting the benchmark for their age group at an early age, which starts from year three. NAPLAN tests are based on the Australian curriculum for years three, five, seven and nine. It covers reading, writing, spelling, grammar and numeracy, which are tailored to the student's abilities as the student answers each question during the test as per the National Assessment Program. This is called the adaptive method. The results therefore showcase the individual's strength and need against the national and school average. Identifying these areas in such an early age will facilitate children to self-improvement, as well as informing ed educators and the government to provide funding for schools in need and to develop pathways for individual improvements. So, Chairperson, ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, we, the negative team, know that NAPLAN should not be abolished. With that, I leave you with a quote by Albert Einstein. Education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for our debate is that NAPLAN should be abolished. We, the affirmative team, strongly believe that this statement is true. Before I state my points, I'd like to point out some flaws in the opposition's arguments. The first negative speaker has tried to tell you that NAPLAN provides a benchmark of progress in students' learning. This is wrong because NAPLAN assessments provide a snapshot of student performance at a specific point of time but do not track long-term development or growth. Ongoing assessments and observations are needed to understand a student's progress over the years and to provide a more comp comprehensive view of their educational journey. Also, according to Curtin University, NAPLAN fails to account for the diverse needs and backgrounds of students. Our first speaker has already explained that NAPLAN makes teachers teach the test. She also stated that NAPLAN tests make teachers, students have increased anxiety and stress. Today I'll be talking to you about two points. Firstly, NAPLAN results do not provide sufficiently accurate student scores which contain 15% margins of error according to a submission by the Associate Professor Margaret Wu of the University of Melbourne. Also, pointed out by the Australian Education Union's submission to the Education Council, the presentation of NAPLAN data on the My School website is misleading. The scores are subject to unusually wide confidence intervals, and the score range is up to two entire NAPLAN scoring bands. NAPLAN is just one snapshot providing a narrow and incomplete picture of a student's education. It can't measure creativity, critical thinking, and problem-solving abilities. Secondly, there are better alternatives to replace NAPLAN. 
In a report titled Putting Students First, moving on from nap time to a new educational assessment published by the University of New South Wales. It recommended a more cost-effective hybrid national assessment system to replace the census-based NAPLAN tests with sample-based assessments to better monitor education system performance, complemented by formative teacher-led assessments. This recommendation aligns with international experiences from leading education systems in Finland, Singapore and Canada. It also helps address the negative well-being consequences to some students of too much pressure to compete in standardised tests. So, in conclusion, there are better ways to replace NAPLAN. Why should we continue with such a flawed assessment providing us insufficient results, yet unreliable? Time's up, NAPLAN. Let's move on. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for our debate is that NAP plan should be abolished. We, the negative team, know that this statement is false. The first affirmative speaker tried to tell you that NAP plan causes stress and anxiety. While this is true, that any test can cause stress and anxiety, this can be minimised by proper preparation and support. Psychologists will tell you that exposure therapy is the best way to learn to manage stress and anxiety. Avoidance by abolishing that plan will mean children will not learn to manage stress until year 12. The first affirmative speaker has also tried to tell you that the NAP plan narrows the curriculum. This is wrong. NAP plan is designed to assess core skills that are foundational for learning. They can still maintain a balanced curriculum and have strong literacy and numeracy skills. Our first speaker has already stated how NAP plan can build resilience and help students recognise whether they are meeting education benchmarks for their age division. Today, I'll be speaking to you about three points. My first point is that NAP plan should not be abolished because it is an important tool for assessing student performance and identifying areas for improvement. NAP plan testing ensures that students receive a quality education. How do I know this? In 2020, the Department for Education for Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria and ACT commissioned an independent review of the NAP plan, chaired by Emeritus Professor McGaw, with a reference group involving teachers, principals and 171 stakeholders across Australia. This produced a 180 page report aptly named NAP plan review report. The number one recommendation for this report is that NAP plan be re-endorsed as it is critical in assessing student learning and when used to guide learning, the NAP plan is a powerful education tool. Now to my second point, NAP plan should not be abolished because it provides valuable data data to identify areas for improvement, data for policy makers to identify def demographic differences and fund programs to ensure equity in education for all Australians and data to keep schools accountable and provide information for families to choose their school. My third and final point is that the landmark NAPPAN review report not only recommends that Australia endorse the NAPPAN but that we should expand in that plan to include STEM subjects of science and technology to match top performing countries like Singapore who use standardised testing data to track and set national education goals. So, Mr Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, we, the negative team, know that NAP plan should not be abolished because it is crucial for student learning, school improvement and provides data for national education goals. With that, I leave you with a quote by Nelson Mandela. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Thank you.
from the third affirmative speaker, Isaiah Rosie. Good evening, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of today's debate is that net plans should be abolished. We, the affirmative team, strongly believe that this statement is true. But before I go into my team's summary, I would first like to point out some flaws in the negative team's arguments. The first speaker of a negative team, no, the second speaker of a negative team has tried to tell you that NAPLAN is important for assessing student performance. Even if learning difficulties are identified, <laughs> The former head of ACARA, Peter Hill, admitted to a Senate Referent Committee on Education, Employment and Workplace Relations that NAPLAN tests cannot be used as a diagnostic tool in part due to the five months lag between the time when the students take the test and the time the tests are delivered. We have also have to consider the fact that most schools do not have the time and the resources to comb through results to find the children with learning difficulties. The first speaker of a negative team has tried to tell you that NAPLAN encourages individual student learning achievement and growth. This is false, this is false because NAPLAN is too focus, narrow to focus. We read in Matt Query Health, some educators raise concerns that NAPLAN's narrow curriculum focus may lead to a reduction in teaching time for subjects not assessed by the test. This narrow curriculum may limit students' exposure to, to diverse range of subjects and experiences, potentially hindering over their overall development. Students need a balanced education, especially those that excel in the arts and more creative areas. The second speaker of a negative team has tried to tell you that students will not manage to learn stress until year 12 without NAPLAN. While some tests may be helpful, the Australian Psychological Society has expressed concerns that NAPLAN places undue pressure on young children, particularly those in year three, who may not have the developed <coughs> capacity to cope with the stress of high stakes testing. The society argues that, the, that such an early exposure to standardizing tests can lead to a negative attitude towards learning at school. Now to my summary. The first speaker has already stated that the implementation of NAPLAN has caused teachers to focus on teaching to the test, limiting other areas of learning. She has also spoken about how NAPLAN contributes to heightening anxiety and poor self-esteem in children. Our second speaker has stated that NAPLAN provides inaccurate data, and she has also demonstrated how there are better alternatives to replace NAPLAN. So, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, the evidence speaks for itself. NAPLAN should be abolished. Thank you. Tonight's debate is that NAPLAN should be abolished. We, the negative team, will prove to you that this statement is undoubtedly false. The first speaker said that teachers will teach the test. This is false because the test is based on Australian curriculum, so students should already be taught what is in the test. As well as this, the test adapts to every student's answers as they go, so every test is unique. The first speaker also said that NAPLAN creates anxiety in students. This is false because even though it may create a minute amount of stress and anxiety, it prepares students for future assessments like exams that actually count towards a student's grade. The second speaker tried to tell you that NAPLAN fails to do what it's supposed to do and there are more alternatives. This is false because NAPLAN is only a single test, once every two years specifically to measure literacy and numeracy, which are benchmarks to all subjects. They also did not provide any specific evidence that NAPLAN fails to do its job. The second speaker tried to tell you that NAPLAN does not track long-term growth. This is wrong because NAPLAN grows every two years from years three to nine, which is six years. Six years that students can evolve from. Our first speaker explained how NAPLAN builds resilience by exposing students to exam pressures, supported by studies from the National Child Health Poll and the Australian Institute of Health. 
This helps students gain confidence for high stakes exams like those in year 11 and 12. She also discussed how NAPLAN ensures fairness by providing a standardised assessment that measures skills like reading and numeracy nationwide, giving all students an equal chance to demonstrate their abilities and identify learning gaps. Our second speaker emphasised NAPLAN's role in assessing student performance and identifying areas for improvement. The NAPLAN review report highlights its importance in evaluating student learning and supporting teachers. She also noted that NAPLAN provides vital data for schools and the government guiding school choice and ensuring accountability. Finally, she mentioned that Australia may expand that plan to include STEM subjects, following the example of high-performing countries, such as Singapore. In conclusion, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, that plan should not be abolished. It is essential for teaching resilience, providing a fair standardised assessment nationwide, and offering valuable data that drives educational improvements. As Australia looks to the future, NAPLAN's potential can only grow, possibly incorporating more subjects to benefit a broader range of students. I leave you with a quote by John Dewey. Education is not preparation for life, education is life itself. Let us continue to support tools like NAPLAN to shape our educational landscape. Thank finalises the results, I will read this evening's chairman notices. We are delighted to announce that the grand finals will be held in the House of Assembly Chamber, Parliament House, on Saturday, 21st of September 2024. And the topic and side information for the semi-finals will be available on the Debating Essay website from tomorrow morning. Please be sure to check your side and debate time information carefully. Debates will be held here at the same venue next week. Thank you.
I now invite the adjudicator, Miss Selge, to come forward. Awesome. Um, well, this is a quarter final, so congratulations to both teams for making this far. Um, we don't give feedback in this round, um, just because it is one of our finals. Um, so I'm just going to give a speaker of the night and then award the debate. So the speaker of the night tonight was someone that we thought had really excellent rebuttal and really great arguments, and that was Sierra. <laughs> really close debate. We did have a split decision to one, but the team that ended up winning was one that, uh, well at least two of us thought had stronger rebuttal and a team case overall, and tonight that was our negative team. Congratulations. I now call upon a member of the runner-up team to give a vote of thanks. Such an amazing debate, and I did think it has been sensational. Thank you for the splendid adjudicators and the organizer debate, um, debating essay. What an experience, and I hope this debate has sparked a few interesting conversations. Thank you. I call upon a member of the winning team to second that vote of thanks. This debate was really hard. You guys did a really good job. It was very hard to like compete with. Thank you for everyone who came, and thank you to Nazareth College for hosting this debate. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attendance. I now de declare this debate closed.